Okay, so we talk about uh, character arrays. Uh, they work just like uh, our integer arrays. They just have some small uh, differences that we have to be aware of. And then uh, we'll go through about six or seven function ex examples. And then at the end of class, I'll create a very small uh, example for a string class. But it'll only have uh, one constructor, one destructor, and we will overwrite the stream and the stream operator. And that'll give you an idea as to how the C++ uh, compiler programmers created, the, or standard library programmers created the string class, OK? Just kind of like we did for the vector class. But we're not going to jump into the rule of five, OK? Uh, I'm just going to focus on, on the character sequence so that hopefully you get an idea of how they when about creating the string class, OK? And that will uh, expose you to that. So let me pull up these examples. OK, so we start here. Uh, I think it's 10. And we go here to characters. And we simply start off with a very simple example, like stack character array. So we'll say uh, void uh, use a character terminate it and you'll see what that means once we write the code and then we come here so include uh, arrays character and we need io stream here okay so when we create an array, then we can go to the same motions that we did for the integer arrays. We can say this, save the size, and then the data type, we give it a name, and then we say uh, size. So when we do this, then C++ creates uh, allocation for us, right? So if we just type that code, And hopefully, this is a, a refresher of uh, what we did for characters. And then this just reinforces your learning to make sure you're understanding how all this works in memory. OK, so we have this code. And we have the stack. Uh, heaps not in play right now, OK? So we have the stack. And by now, you all know the drill, right? We have size, uh, maybe three. We'll stick to three. That's three, OK? And uh, then we have one, two, three slots. So then, um, as always, uh, these three slots are for this array. But we don't know what's in there. Whatever was in there last, when that memory was used, that's what's in there. Why? Because we just asked the compiler for, for memory, right? For three memory slots. So something's there. We just don't know what's in there, OK? Uh, we can uh, initialize that by, uh, let me make sure it compiles, OK, before I blurt out that that's the way to do it. So let me go here, here. I'm pretty sure that's the way you can uh, initialize them all. So let's uh, build. Oh, let me. Uh, so it's just giving me a warning. So I know one of them is here. And then one of them is that it's just saying that I've not used this variable. OK. But it initialized them. When we initialize characters, all of them are initialized uh, to a 0. So the question should be, why to a 0? Uh, what chapters will cover theory portion? Everything we covered after, uh, after actually one week before the midterm. Everything having to do with classes, references, pointers, uh, stack arrays, dynamic arrays, virtual functions, pure virtual functions, polymorphism, inheritance, uh, template classes. Recursion, uh, algorithm analysis, which we'll cover the next two, la last two lectures, uh, recursion. 
dynamic memory yeah okay so uh, let me see here where was i uh, okay so that's that and that code translate to this in a diagram and the question is well, why zero well, that should be the question right so let me come over here bring this right here and then we just do a search for uh, ascii table and this is the table that tells us what numerical representations uh how they map to characters right so notice zero is null and null and programming is nothing right so so if uh oops so they are initialized in essence to nothing right so that's what we just did they're initialized to nothing and if we try to display it then guess what we will see nothing okay so let's go ahead and uh do that okay and let's go ahead and run this and notice well we didn't see anything well because we've initialized them to nothing right so it don't make sense that we don't see anything and we can initialize them to something so we can say uh, j o h n and then we can run it well actually let me backtrack here because i'm not calling the function right so let me go here i have to go to main and execute something right so nothing's been run okay so so now let's let it run running terminal okay so nothing we'll come back here control z let's run it run so we see uh john here so if we come back over here uh maybe I don't want to change the diagram, right? So we go with Joe. Actually, uh, we'll need four. So we'll go with Joe and let me modify the diagram right here. Zero. Okay. So we're like, okay. So what happens? Let's run it. Run. so we see joe so we come back and uh, see what was changed and then we're like okay so this is not there this is not there that's not there so this is of course in numeric and on binary right whatever the number representation for joe o and e are there but we'll just stick to the human friendly letters right so j-o-e and notice the zero stays there because we are using an initializer here so curly braces always means initialize so when we do that then uh, C++ initialize them to zero and in C++ zero means to uh, character array that's the end of the sequence so we can say uh, uh, let me see uh, while so let me see let me do that. Well, name at i not equal to, we can say the, notice that to C++ it's also equal to zero, but it means also the null terminator. So if we use null terminator, then we're telling C++ iterate until the end of this character array. Okay, so in here we can say um, C out name at i. And let's not forget to increment. I. Right, that way we don't stay stuck in an infinite loop. So let's go ahead and run this. Right, so we see Joe, which is this C out here, and then we see uh, J O E, and uh, 
nothing this is displayed at the end if, if we hit this sequence then our loop stops okay and once our loop stops then then it stops iterating if we take this route zero equals j so we, it's a subscript uh, operations work also right with index so we are initializing each element okay so we say j o e and then we run it and notice that that so far we're also okay okay so different ways to initialize our string but if we do this then we have to be explicit and we say okay i want to terminate the string meaning like this is the end of my my, my uh, sequence right one two three four size four so we always save the last element to tell c plus plus a that's the end of my my string and we can run it again the same thing's going to happen like our program will end but now we are uh, explicitly making sure that this code in the future won't cause out of memory or out of or out of memory bounds uh, errors meaning i loop here i loop here i loop here i loop here and i didn't terminate my string maybe this is some other character and then i'm trying to access this memory which my array doesn't own so then c plus plus will give me a memory error right so if you're seeing segmentation errors in c plus plus in your code for the tic-tac-toe then that's what's happening you are using trying to use memory that is not valid anymore okay and if you are then you can stop by my office i'll office hour i'll virtual office hour i'll help you fix that okay okay so that was one example it's a stack array simple nothing you've not seen before and then we will create another i'll go back to the header in a little bit just to make sure it'll be the same code but i'll just make sure that i eliminate this and then use initializer uh, j o e when I do this, then C++ will initialize the last character to the null terminator, and I don't have to explicitly do it, okay? Although I can do it, I don't have to because I'm using initializer, okay? Curly brace, uh, open and close means initializer. So if I come back over here, and I say, uh, use that one, but if it's not in the header, then my program won't, won't run correctly. So I have to come back here and add it to the header. Okay, now I come to main, and then I can say uh, use control space command use car not terminated. Okay, and run it. Same difference, right? Program runs okay. So that's just dealing with, and the code's the same. Okay, this diagram will work the same for both uh, samples samples that I created. Also, what's the deal with this uh, null guy, the null terminator? So let's say, let's use uh, use string terminated. So that we can see like, what the heck does that guy have to do with character sequences? So let's go here and I need the string include using string and then I can say uh, string name equals uh, Joe Doe C out name new line character name equals Joe null terminator Doe C out name and we will execute this code. So let me make sure that I have it in the header. Okay, I do. And then 
executed here no void necessary here so use string terminated okay so we go ahead and execute this one Joe Doe Joe so up here I told you that once C++ sees this then it's like oh that's the end of my sequence so even though we created name with that when we do name equals to something else like this then C++ assumes that when we type this in, then that's the end of our sequence, and that's why we only see Joe here. But over here, since there's a space here, then it assumes that it's uh, Joe Doe. Okay. Let me get the door here. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so... Any questions here? And again, this is not heap allocation. These are stack arrays. Notice over here, this, the heap's not in place. So everything's happening here on the stack. Okay, so that's an important distinction. So let's go ahead and uh, do a dynamic character array. And we will start with a very simple example. So we go here. <clears throat> we go ahead and close this one. And we jump to seven here. So in the same function, we will create memory. We will use the memory, and then we will uh, clear the memory. So we'll say uh, void use dynamic char array, and maybe uh, let me see. Do we pass in the size yet? So we'll say, okay, I want to pass a const size, size. So to use this, I will need to include something. Memory, okay. Once I do that, I should be okay. Come up here, let me make sure I include Arrays dynamic character. Okay. Oh, I think yesterday we, I ran into an issue here. So in the CMake, if you're following along, we need to go to the CMake TXT and we need to change this .h to CPP. If we don't do that, our program crashes. It doesn't run. Okay. So. Okay. So let me go here. And again, remember the three-step process for memory. Uh, create dynamic memory, use the memory, clear the memory, right? So delete the memory. So we say, okay, uh, character pointer name equals new character size. Create memory. Now we need to uh, use memory. So we'll say uh, enter name. C in, we'll take care of that in a little bit. C in dot get line. Get line takes a pointer to character, so that's name, and then the size, so we do that. And then finally, we will simply uh, display it. And then I need to make sure I get rid of the memory, so delete it, right? So delete it. Come back over here. Include IO stream. Okay, so we're here. Let me do this first. C in name. Okay. C in, C in. CN operators are like that. Okay, so now we go to main and we'll run use dynamic character array. So we go to main here. Uh, 
include arrays and use dynamic character array. We'll start with 10, okay? And then we go ahead and run this piece. Again, our goal with dynamic memory always limit the scope where it's used. Not as easy as the, as the steps indicate, right? So create, use, and get line. We've uh, found out that this piece, sometimes it's not as easy to, to define, right? So here we'll say John Doe enter. So notice I type John Doe, but when I display it, it only outputs Doe. Right, so I know you know the answer now, right? It's like, oh, we have to use get line, right? Yes. So if we use cn, cn will always uh, think that once there's a space, that that's where you want the capture to end, right? So then it'll ignore the other characters. If we want our code to work as we want, then we have to use cn get line. And then we go here and we run in terminal. And then we go with the same example. So notice now we see uh, John Doe. Okay, so create memory, use the memory, and delete the memory. Very simple concept, very difficult to implement. Any questions here? So if we go here and we diagram that code, I'll just diagram this code. Okay, this actually just this and uh, well actually i guess i have to do everything let me just copy that control z okay go here okay so c, c and get line in memory does some other stuff we're not going to focus on, on that piece okay we're just going to focus on the memory so is the heap used here yes because we are dealing with creating dynamic memory so size assuming size was three we'll stick to three and then we have uh the name and we know by this time that we will get some memory on the heap right this one points to that address and since we just acquired memory here initially we we don't there's something in there but we don't know what that is C and get line executes, um, assuming we type uh, JJ, right? Because we need one space for the null terminator. So we'll say uh, JJ, and then this one will be zero. And then that's how that will look in memory, okay? Always, always, we need to reserve one element, the last one, for the null terminator when we are dealing with character arrays, okay? That's why when we ran the, the string example with uh, zero, then the string uses a sequence of character arrays in the class, and that's why it's like, oh, that's the end of uh, the sequence. Okay, so any questions here with this example? Main thing here is be careful, right, with cn.getLine. Make sure you use that if you want to capture spaces or like a sentence. If you were just capturing like first name, then you could use cn, and then the other the other character array was last name, then you wouldn't have to worry about uh, the cn get line. But if you want to capture spaces uh, or a sentence, then you have to make sure you use cn get line. Okay. Okay. This uh in one function. We can split out the memory usage into two functions and we've done that with uh, the 
the integer class, but we will do it with this one so that you get exposed to it again. So we'll say get dynamic character array. And make sure you're paying attention to how we are creating the arrays here for uh, stack and uh, for stack arrays and dynamic arrays because you will see questions about that in the final like it'll ask you like how do you initialize the dynamic character array so then you have to pick something that looks like this right and how do you initialize a stack array then you would have to uh, choose something that looks uh, either like like this or like this okay so make sure you <coughs> you learn that okay so we have a uh, get dynamic character array let's go ahead and copy the signature come here we return character array so meaning we have to create a pointer here we can say character pointer equals new what new character array of size and then we simply return character pointer why can we do that because our function saying we will return a character pointer so we create a character pointer and then we return it okay so what is this doing creating a dynamic memory are we using it here no are we deleting it here no meaning it's the responsibility of code that calls this function to more importantly I mean to use it but more importantly to delete the memory if they don't then our program is going to be having memory leaks right and that's that's not good so let's go ahead and uh, say okay void we will use the memory create use the mem get the memory and use it in one function and delete it in one function why we're trying to narrow the scope where our dynamic memory is used so limit dynamic character array scope okay and let me copy everything but the semicolon we come here and then we write code that will use our created memory and we use this memory so we're like okay so what's going on here well let's create a character maybe name character uh, array or pointer to character and then we say okay not new but we can say get dynamic character array pass in the size which is a function argument here so now here we create memory right and then the next step is to use the memory so we will say like enter name same simple example we'll say cn dot uh, get line pointer name size and then we simply uh, display name and then let's not forget to delete name okay okay so let me diagram this quickly okay so we go here and we uh, okay so we have these functions and let me make them larger so we'll just a high level walk through what's going on in memory okay so uh, of course assuming that this two functions execute in, in main right so so assuming this is main we would call uh, get dynamic array actually not that we would call limit character array scope and for this example we we'll use three because it'll be easier easier to diagram that's all we do in main 
limit dynamic character array calls get dynamic character array. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what happens. I had already drawn this diagram with integers, but a little review won't hurt. So we have a stack heap okay so main runs main gets its memory limit runs and gets its memory and get dynamic gets its memory okay so mains running limit is call limit calls get dynamic okay so let's go into that code and see what we have we have a uh, size let's assume size was three right so then somewhere here in its region we have three and then we'll also have the pointer what do we name the pointer character pointer right so here is the char pointer that's where the dynamic memory is created right so assuming it's created the same magical number and then we don't know what's in there but we do know that that memory is created on the heap okay so let me go here this executes creates dynamic memory and now we return character pointer to limit dynamic memory right so meaning this name and size so maybe let me do right here so this is size 3 and then we have a name pointer 15b0 is copied to it and then it has a reference so then this pointer disappears when function exits right but notice that dynamic memory still exists the function exits the dynamic memory still exists but now we have a different pointer pointing to the dynamic memory okay so then we come back over here and we have the pointer pointing to memory that was created over here but it's now this function's responsibility to more importantly delete it okay that's 100 percent has to happen otherwise we are going to get a memory leak i mean we use the memory but then this is the important piece right here let's make sure we delete the memory okay so questions there so if we pass size to get line then of uh, of course like it, it's to limit the size of this guy so there this and this work together right so we created the array we know that we created a, t a length size so then we have to pass that to get line and then get line make sure that we don't go beyond the allocated memory okay okay so while limit dynamic character array scope is executing meaning we capture the name we get line we output name and then we call delete name so once we call delete name oops when uh, delete is called then Uh, delete memory right so so delete memory so we delete the memory clear from the heap so we're not leaking memory and then the function starts exiting okay it starts exiting and then this goes out of scope this one obviously went out of scope right but notice what it's following is that last in first out so main is first in uh, limit is second in uh, get dynamic is third in so this one executes uh, finishes executing it, it's removed from the stack 
this one uh, after delete is called is removed from the stack and finally our program are, is removed from memory so everything is removed from the stack okay so so we have to make sure that uh, we understand that right last in first out so that's a very good example of what's going on so then let's go ahead and run this program right so we go here uh, seven so we go here and let me make sure I'm using limit okay limit scope okay so we go here and limit character array scope and uh, I know I did uh, three over there mainly for uh, the diagram right I didn't want to draw a lot of boxes but we can do 10 and then we can type something in so i'll do purposely john doe okay good up arrow to run it again enter uh, so jonathan doe right so notice let me see you got one two three four five six seven eight probably the space nine so notice now like it didn't do a uh, dough because we said limit the size to 10 so then it did what we told it like i'm going to limit the size to 10 so if we wanted to fit that then we would have to increment the size and then we can run the code again I don't even know that's how you spell Jonathan. So Jonathan Doe, right? I think. I think I've seen him both ways, right? So notice uh, the size. Uh, lim this size limits the characters that get lines collecting. Okay. So. Okay. So again, uh, used in one use uh, create memory, use memory, delete memory in one function. Create memory in a different function. I get the memory, I use it and delete it all in one function, but then again, we are still relying on the developer to remember to call delete. We don't have to do that. We can uh, get the help of a um, smart pointer to help us manage memory, right? So let me see here. We can say, okay, so let me say oops uh, character pointer i don't really have to create this function but i will okay dynamic uh, character memory because the code will be like this one over here but that's okay um, size of t size let me go stick this in the header okay so we create memory and then we want to create a function to delete dynamic car memory it'll take a pointer to character and then finally we create a function that limits the scope limit dynamic car mem scope and then we go and write code for that for these two so remove the semicolon open close curly brace remove uh, semicolon open close curly brace Okay, so when I said it was the same memory, I was the same code. I was kidding, right? So we'll use the same code, and then we can say, well, we want to delete memory, but let me say C out uh, create memory, and then let me say C out delete memory, and then I have to call delete the memory that pointer points to array memory is there let me say using shared pointer 
Okay. So this example is actually the same example I wrote like two, three weeks ago for integers, but we will use it for character arrays. Our goal here is to limit the scope of memory and to seek the help of a smart pointer. And we're going to hand off the memory creation function to the smart pointer, meaning we're going to use get dynamic uh, char mem as, an, as a function argument for the smart pointer. And we will also use delete dynamic memory char memory as the second function argument for our shared pointer, meaning our shared pointer is now responsible for creating the memory. And then once our <coughs> shared pointer is going out of scope, it'll delete the memory for us. We don't have to remember to call delete, it'll call it for us. Although we did have to write the code for delete, okay? Kind of like we do for the classes where we have to write the destructor and delete, but C++, C says destructor exists and then it executes it and then we don't have to remember to call delete, okay? So shared pointer of character array, uh, name, I guess we'll use name. And then we say, uh, okay, so I said we would use get dynamic character array as an argument. So why can a function be used as an argument? Well, if we look at this example, functions are loaded onto the stack, meaning they are addressable, meaning we can get the address where it's executing, so it can be used as a function argument. Okay, so uh, C++ is smart enough to know that it's a function and then it'll execute it for us behind the scenes. Okay, and then we say, okay, I also uh, delete. So what we're saying here in layman's term is create a character array, uh, sh smart pointer, name it, obviously name, uh, to create memory called get dynamic char array. And to delete memory, call delete dynamic memory. Okay. So then uh, create memory. We want to use memory. Now this is a smart pointer. In other occasions, I've said that if we use name dot then we see other functionality and notice here we see get and get returns a pointer to character meaning oh get line we know takes a pointer to char so we can say name get so that it can give us the pointer that was created for this character array by the smart pointer and then we pass in size into our function and then finally we say uh see out name and we can call this function and we don't have to notice here we do not have to call delete in here okay we're configuring it here memory creation memory deletion we go to main cpp we will run this out and then we'll say limit dynamic chart mem scope and we'll say uh, 10 and we will execute that piece of code. <clears throat> okay, so enter name, John Doe. Let me see, limit dynamic, uh, wait a minute. Uh, did I put it in the wrong function? Uh, Charmin, oh yeah, I, I put the wrong function. So let me use Charmin here. Notice it's still it's still executed because well, it's the same function creating memory for the correct array type, right? But let me run it again. I just want to make sure that you see that the memory is created for us, okay? So notice here, uh, memory is created for us, meaning get dynamic char mem executed. So this piece executed, and now the smart pointer. Uh, takes ownership of the char pointer. This is in the smart pointer's back pocket. Once our code gets here, our function starts executing. The smart pointer is like, I'm going out of scope. Let me 
make sure I call delete dynamic charm and it does it for us automatically. Okay, so let's run the code to see that in action. So notice, uh, see out name, it displays a name, the function starts exiting, and notice delete memory executes for us. And just to make sure that, uh, I know I did this for uh, the integer, but we'll do it here too, just to show you that everything is happening in that function. So let's run it one more time. Create memory, John Doe, exit memory. But important here, notice uh, before function, so this statement executes in the function, the action's happening. Create memory, capture John Doe, uh, see out John Doe, delete memory, and then we see after function. So everything's happening in here which is what we want. We're limiting the scope of our dynamic memory creation, usage, and deletion to try our best to mitigate the memory leak issue, right, or the risk. Okay, questions here? Yes, I mean, I don't really do data validation because that's like bells and whistles stuff to me, right? Like my main concern here is let's learn about the memory creation. But yes, in a real world program, we would be uh, writing C++ code to validate data. Uh, you will be surprised how complicated that code can get, right? That's why I don't really focus on that. And there's plenty of examples on, on the internet for data validation uh, for C++, right? So, okay. Um, Okay, so that was this piece. So we run through all the examples of uh, using uh, stack memory in functions, using stack memory, I mean dynamic memory in functions, focusing on limiting our scope of uh, memory creation, uh, usage and deletion, uh, using uh, functions, using a combination of functions, and finally using functions and smart pointers, which is probably the best way to do it, right? Meaning this is the best way to mitigate the risk of uh, producing memory leaks, right? Because now we're not depending on, on us. We're, we're seeking the help of C++ uh, with the shared smart pointer to create memory and delete the memory when it's no longer needed, okay? Which is what we always want to do, right? You don't, you didn't really have to worry about this in Python. In Python, it's mostly like, okay, this is how you program. But now in C++, we went through, this is how you program, but now this is under the hood stuff, okay? Okay, so one uh, final example, and that'll be uh, a very small snippet of what it would take to, or what more or less the C++ standard library programmers went through to create the string class. We went through, a, through about, what, three lectures for the vector, and hopefully that gave you a very good idea of memory management techniques, and also, like, uh, lets you peek into more or less how the vector was created, okay? For the string, we're just not going to go as deep, right? We're not going to create the rule of three. We're not going to create the rule of five. We're just going to create uh, memory in the constructor, delete the memory in the destructor, we will overwrite the stream operator and we will overwrite the stream operator to show you that, hey, this is more or less the path the standard library creators took in creating the string class. Also, if you look at the book in the uh, strings and C strings chapter, uh, what chapter is that? I think, uh, let me check here. I have it here you will see that uh, the C, uh, the character arrays, have a lot of built-in functions in C that allow you to manipulate characters, right, without you have to write code. Let me look at here. Let me look for that. Looking for it. Okay, found it. Hmm. 
don't have a chapter here. Oh, chapter 11, sorry. So it's chapter 11. So in chapter 11, you'll see that there's built-in functions for, for character arrays that you can use and also for characters, right? Like you can compare characters, you can change from lowercase to uppercase. Why didn't I focus on that? Because I think it's more important to focus most of my time in the object-oriented programming concepts. You can always go to CPP reference or the internet to see what functions exist for uh, the C uh, sequences, right? And mo most of them are legacies and <clears throat> you'll be uh, at home once you see the examples are very easy to use, okay? But I don't, I don't talk about them in class. Okay, so let's jump from here to a different folder. We'll use the next folder, 8. And uh, we start off with the header guards. If not defined, my string header, then define my string header. And if we create a class, capital letter string. Okay, so we have a private access specifier. Mm. Include uh, I think that one was allows me to use uh, the size of T size right so just like the vector we need a size and just like the vector we need some sequence so we'll create a pointer to a character and we will simply name it sequence right so that's that and then we go here we need a string size comes in we initialize size and then we need the destructor and we'll write some code okay oops let me include either stream okay so i've just set up the the skeleton code right so we have a uh, constructor initializes this size we have a destructor that currently doesn't do much uh, we'll display c out create memory and just like we did for a vector we will have an initializer and here we'll say okay sequence sequence initialize to new character of s okay so we create dynamic memory here right so just like we did for the vector but the vector was named elements right so okay 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 making sure i don't have any extra symbols in the destructor we will delete the memory so we'll say oh, delete memory again I am purposely not worrying about the rule of three or the rule of five. If we wanted this class to be useful, we would have to define those, okay? Uh, delete memory, and then we say delete uh, sequence. Okay, uh, let me see what's this. Um expected declaration looks okay what did I miss okay my stream my stream include include class string private public uh, open close sequence open close open close Open close. I don't know. Let's see if I did wrong, but let me seek some help from the compiler. Uh, 
Okay, I guess it's just catching up. Okay, so we have the bare bones. So this class right now, all it does if we create the string class would be create memory. Let me eliminate all this. And uh, we have to include uh, arrays dym1 string main. Okay. I need a size, right? So I'll say uh, 10. And we can run this example. Run in terminal. So notice uh, create memory, delete memory. So when we run this code, we are using the constructor and we are using the destructor to help us initialize and then eventually eliminate the memory. Okay, now we need to write some more code uh, to make sure that we can use, uh, make this a useful example. So we'll say, okay, so let's create a friend. We overload uh, Austrian reference operator. Uh, oops, Austrian reference out string reference string friend a string reference operator a string a stream reference in maybe since this is out we use const there and then we say a string reference s right in so we need to modify the string so we don't need a const uh, designation okay so we have that code let's come over here and write some code so already one I need to eliminate friend. Okay, so now I have this code. And before I forget, return out. And then I say, okay, so out s dot sequence. Okay, to display that and then here before I forget let me return in and then I can say okay cn dot or actually in dot get line right in dot get line we need a pointer to a character we know we have that in s sequence and we need the size we know we have that in s size And we've all overloaded the all stream and this stream operators or C out C in. Meaning now we can show you more or less how they went about creating the string. All right, so okay, C in name. C out name and keep it simple enter name so C in name C out name we create an instance of our string class and let's see what happens right so we have to run it from here Okay, so uh, 10, so we can type John Doe, and then maybe here I need to uh, create a new line character. So notice how uh, the character array is created in the class for us. We use it, and since we are using a stack variable for class, then C++ uses our destructor to make sure that the memory is eliminated for us. 
we don't have to worry about calling delete here. The delete, we have it pre-configured in our code here. And the fact that we use a uh, stack class variable, then C++, once this program starts exiting, calls it for us. Okay. And notice here, delete memory. So that's how uh, we would use character arrays in C++ programming. Uh, questions? Okay, so that's all I have for today. Uh, next class, uh, we will, what's today? Wednesday, right? So we will cover the last two topics, which is introduction to algorithms and recursion. You will have questions about those on the final exam, right? So make sure you, and you have an opportunity to get a, a quiz makeup, right? Just by being here, okay? so.